Just want to let you know what's, what's up here. How many of you have read any of the newspaper articles about the poisoning of people out by Triangle Lake by timber industry helicopters? They have yeah! Yeah. yeah. So, uh, us folks that have been living out there by Triangle Lake, we're in the woods. They come in, they clear cut, they spray poison, we rush kids to the doctor, people have been getting sick. This rally is to try to put an end to that. We're going to be starting off with some wonderful reggae music by Eugene. Eugene's favorite reggae band, Soul Seed. You, how many of you have heard Soul Seed before? Raise your hand. Let's hear it for Soul Seed. After an initial 30 minute set of music, then we've got some speakers, expert speakers on the topic of the pesticides and the forestry and the clear cutting. And then, to keep you here, we've got a closing set of music by Soul Scene after the speakers. So we start with music, then you've got some speakers, and then you've got a closing set by Soul Scene. Yeah. And if they are ready, let's give it up for Eugene's finest reggae band, Soul Scene. What's up, y'all? We are Soul Seed. It's a pleasure to be here today and in the support of this cause. We're going to play some music for you. Thank you for coming here today.
Merge to authority. Public schools try to teach you that you always got someone to look up to that knows better than you. But this is about ruling your own time, ruling your own mind, ruling your own life. Of a true equality, she 
We're the prophets of this world of ours, we're facing it for reason But we lost the nature of their words, this season after season To the message that they found, we get forgotten and away And the very things they preach, it comes up further with their face So don't you listen when they say you're nothing but a one And don't you ever think that you are the number one We must all sit together on this universal throne If our souls will never get a chance to be our own be a king or a queen of your own time It's got to rule with your own mind Don't you about the police and politicians They're just the same and as a place I got a new magician They believe people are so blind Tell the truth of the beauty of the art I am Don't fall prey to the illusion of the vision For all the peace of God to win what's best we have this vision To the hearts of the people and the whole land, whole land. And only when we're dancing to the same beat Are we ever home again You can be a king or a queen of your own time It's got to rule with your own mind Don't you bow to police and politicians They're just the same they're not the face They got an old magician Things we believe keep us so blind of the beauty held in our eyes Don't fall back to it for the reason of the vision For all the peace of God to win my country is this vision Reality. 
get it out If you want to be free You got the truth there You got the truth there Where we believe in the truth Soul Seed, some speakers, and then a closing set by Soul Seed. Thanks for having us. Yes. <laughs> um, right, this next one's called Solo Umano, or Only Human. If you want to catch more, we'll be playing Darling Reunion next Saturday. I hope you all enjoy fair. It's going to be fun. I want to give our love to our brother Graham who couldn't make it today, but if you want to see him, come out to Battle of the Jews. We'll be there. <laughs> Thank you. 
music and we to work and join with the new song.
who I consider to be uh, the most expert forester who takes an unbiased, holistic position on what's happening in Oregon's forest. And he's going to alert you to who actually owns the most land in Oregon today. We've got Forester Roy King. Thank you for being here this morning. I am thank you for putting this all together. We're all thankful for this day. We were thankful the truth gets spoken here. have its way. I think I need to tell you three things. I need to tell you just a little bit about where I come from so that my opinion has to be. I think I need to tell you a little bit about the vision that I see for this country and for this place in the forest. About the danger involved by the corporate poison of Lane County. I start with who I am. My name is Roy Keen. I'm almost 70. I'm a grandfather. I have nine grandchildren. I have children from different places in the I have children in different places in this state. We all live here. Most of us pay taxes. I paid a lot of tax last year on property that I live on and own. About a 30th of the taxes that warehouse are paid on property of equal value. So one of the things that we're looking at and one of the things that I stand for as a person in this county is fair taxation. We need for the larger landowners that own the larger part of this county to step up not only stop poisoning this county, but start paying their fair share of taxes. Beyond that, beyond that, I've been in the forest for 40 years. I've driven over a million miles. And what I'm going to tell you is largely what I've seen with my eyes, not what I've read in a white paper. I think it's also important for me to tell you my own vision. A long time ago, deep in the woods, I had my vision for this country and for these woods. And I saw a high forested mountain, and I saw a great tree, and it was the tree of life, and there was a river of life, clear as crystal, flowing down from this mountain, and its waters were going out to nurture and care for the humans that lived under this mountain. And it was a high place, and it was a beautiful new heaven and new earth, and the old had passed, and the new had come. And so my vision is to help to move the new forward, to help to bring the new in, and to help to put the old away. And now, I would tell you about my experience with forced poisoning. My first experience was with some of my own brothers in arms. I was in the Army Infantry, and I had brothers that were poisoned in the 60s by Agent Orange in Vietnam. They were poisoned. They were not struck down by enemy fire. They were not hit with shrapnel. They were poisoned by Agent Orange, which is very much, minus a molecule or two, the same poison that's getting sprayed around our communities and in our forest. And then I saw Agent Orange used again when I fled the system in the 60s, when I got up and I moved away from the corporate world and I moved deep into Southern Oregon and picked up a different life and began to live peacefully in the forest, we looked out and there were great swaths of hillsides. Thousands of acres being sprayed with Agent Orange. This was before the mediated agreement. This was in the 70s, in the early 70s. Tan Oak in Southern Oregon was very difficult to manage. It didn't need management. They just needed to work with the force that was there. But they sprayed thousands and thousands of acres of that country. And the spray ran down into the waters. And it poisoned the deer. And the deer had little twisted livers and they staggered in the woods. And we organized at the grassroots level. And we worked with people in the early herbicide and pesticide movement 
to form the mediated agreement to stop the overt use of Agent Orange within the Forest Service on public lands. So today, I want to remind everybody that today, the Forest Service, without using herbicides and poisons at any appreciable scale, is able to do a very nice job, a better job than the industries here that own private land of managing their forest. So you don't need to use poisons to manage forests. So here's what's underneath this whole thing. Here's what's down underneath this. There is a deeper, a deeper motive in my mind. I see not only a vision, but being an old grandfather and having much experience on this planet, I see conspiracy. It's easy for me to see the conspiracy because for a long time I've been watching. And what I see is very simple. I see the corporate lords poisoning the forest so that they can push people out of the forest into the urban centers. I don't see this just as a move to grow trees on 30-year rotations. I see this as a larger move, like Agent Orange in Vietnam. It wasn't about herbiciding the forest so you could see the movement of troops at night. It was about herbiciding the countryside, killing the agriculture, killing the pollinators, killing the forest, and collecting people into cities in Vietnam that Americans had control of. It was about control. So what's happening today up in our forest is not just about civil culture or trying to grow trees on short rotations. It's about the lords of this county that own hundreds of thousands of acres and are widely invested in this town controlling things in the future. The more that we are moved into these urban centers, the easier it is to manipulate our food, to manipulate our fuel, the easier it is to manipulate the media, manipulate our minds, and control us. And this has always been what the feudal corporate system has been about. Just another modern method of controlling the people. And so how do we break with that? We start with a higher vision. We start with a vision of a poison-free place to live. What if these same people that were poisoning their forest lands, what if they were doing that inside this town? What if my neighbors had a little four-foot wingspan helicopter and they were spraying the yard next to me? You see, the zoning would stop them immediately. In other words, here in this town, we have control over private property. You may think you own your house, but if you think you really own it, you go out and do something that violates the zoning and you will find out that the collective society around you will tell you what you can and can't do on your land. So we need to get rid of the myth that we have no say over what happens on these private forest lands. And I want to tell something today to everybody here. You own the water in those private forest lands. Behind those locked gates, that's your water. Behind those locked gates, that's your wildlife. Behind those locked gates, those are your salmon. That's yours. So we have a vision of bringing down the poison, and we reach out to that vision by taking back our rights to the land. We take back our rights to the water. We don't just tell the governor of this state to stop the poisoning. We tell the governor of this state, we want our water back. We want our wildlife back. They're out there killing bears by the hundreds because the bears strip a few fir trees. But there's thousands of acres of nothing but sterile young fir trees, so what else are our bears to eat? And so they're killing our wildlife so they can grow a few more board feet per acre. This is immoral. It is against God and nature, and we have to bring it down. I want to leave you with one thought. I want to leave you with something that I learned a long time ago in a way that I got myself out of a very tight squeeze and one of the reasons I'm still here and get to have nine grandkids. It's called unity. There must be unity. There must be a coming together and a unity of the people. Everything comes out of that unity. 
So come together on this, people. This is your homeland you're fighting for. Become the real homeland security. Thank you. Is that some wisdom or what? Yes. The book I'm holding up is called Bitter Fog. It's about the struggle that people out where I live in the woods, outside, we're in Lane County, of making Agent Orange illegal. But like Roy just told you, the majority of the herbicide called Agent Orange is available today called 2,4-D. When the government recently, you know, they used to tell us, where's your proof? When we told them that those helicopters spraying pesticide from the sky next to our homes, it was coming into our windows, coming into our house. Kids were getting rushed to the hospital. This woman that wrote this book, if you want to know how callous the government can be, let me tell you what happened to this poor lady. Carol Van Strom, her children were playing in their front yard in a creek bed. They were hit directly by aerial spray pesticide 2,4-D. She called the Department of Forestry, she called all of the government agencies and they all told her there was nothing to worry about. Two weeks later, her children's hair had fallen out. They were vomiting blood. They had blood in their schools. She took that to the government agencies and she was told, the pesticides are completely safe. The fact that your children got directly sprayed by the liquid pesticide and had their hair fall out and blood come out their bowels is a coincidence, is what the government said. Do you believe that was a coincidence? No. Do you want reform? Yes. Thank you. Now, this woman, having seen that, decided to write a book. She wrote this book talking about the dangers of dioxins and 2,4-D. And do you know what happened to her? Well, she left to go to a court appearance, realized she forgot a file, turned around, went back to her house in the woods, and there she found three Dow chemical executives with two U.S. government forest agency agents installing listening devices on the trees around her house. Her house was burned down by arson and all of her children were killed. The fire inspector said it was clearly arson. He collected the evidence and a week later when she called she was told that he had died mysteriously the day after collecting the evidence and the evidence was gone. I know who did it. It was Dow Chemical and you know what they did at that time? They established something in Oregon right then called, and this is who really rules your state, they're called Oregonians for Food and Shelter. Yeah, let's boo, Oregon's for food and shelter. Boo. Yeah, you know what? Here's who Oregonians for food and shelter really are. Their board of directors is Dow Chemical. Their chief executive, Dow Chemical executive. Their board of directors, Monsanto, Weyerhaeuser, Syngenta, you know, Oregonians for Food and Shelter calls themselves on their web page, page a grassroots organization. Hey, 
in my body, I'm one of them that got tested both by the government and by a private researcher, and they found pesticides in my urine. The two pesticides that they found are 2,4-D, the one we've been talking about, the active ingredient of Agent Orange, and atrazine. Atrazine is now found in 94% of water samples taken in the Midwest because of its heavy use there. Now it's turning up in the bodies of Oregonians. Do you know that the testing done in Triangle Lake yeah, it found that we who live right where the spraying happens have really high elevated levels. But guess what it also proved? It also proved that you all have pesticides in your urine if you go get tested. Virtually 100% of Oregonians have levels that I would certainly consider potentially cancer causing of 2,4-D and atrazine and a whole litany of other herbicides in your urine. How many of you will say no more? No more! So we decided we're going to stand up to the timber industry, but guess what we found out, brothers and sisters? We found out, just like Roy just said, Damn, it really is a conspiracy, you know what? Monsanto, I, I, I got some proof for you right here that if I just told you that Monsanto runs your government, you know, not going one ear, not the other, but I've got the names, you're going to help me prove the fact. When I ask you to name the occupation of each of the following government officials who I selected from... Democratic and Republican presidential administrations to make the point that it does not matter if a Republican or Democrat's in the office, the government is co-opted by these pesticide companies. You shout the word Monsanto when I ask you for their employers. And it's true. These guys are all linked to Monsanto. Michael A. Friedman. Acting Commissioner of the United States Food and Drug Administration, Department of Health and Human Services, Senior Vice President for Clinical Affairs of Pharmaceuticals, for who? Monsanto, Marcia Hale, Assistant to the President of the United States, Director for Intergovernmental Affairs. Director of International Government Affairs, before that for who? Monsanto! Mickey Cantor, how many of you can remember him from the good Democratic administration? Well, Mickey Cantor goes from being the Secretary of the United States for Commerce. That sounds boring, but that's all business, that's where the money is, it's the Department of Commerce. So he leaves office and goes to become Director member of the board of directors of who? Monsanto. Josh King, secretary of the United States Department of Commerce, former trade representative of the United States, a member of the board of directors, the director of global communication in the Washington DC office of who? Monsanto. William D. Ruckelhaus, Chief of the Environmental Protection Agency, leaves there and becomes a member of the board of directors of who? Monsanto. Michael Taylor, legal advisor to the United States Food and Drug Administration, the Bureau of Foods. Deputy Commissioner for Policy at the United States Food and Drug Administration. Who did he work for before that? Monsanto. Right now he's the head of the Washington DC office of the Monsanto Corporation. Do you detect a trend? Do you see that the government agencies that are supposedly in charge of regulating 
foods and the environment have been literally co-opted by those very corporations and they've got such a stranglehold for eight years I've been confronting them and I'll tell you they own Oregon. Oregonians for Food and Shelter runs Oregon. They do it through what's called, and it sounds boring, the Oregon Department of Agriculture. Do you know that that is Monsanto? That is Dow Chemical? That is DuPont? And they control the legislation that gets crafted in Salem. I'm going to end with a few more pesticide facts for you. Let me stress that we're a non-professional environmental group. We have no office. We have no paid staff. We're the actual Over. people that live in the hills that see the helicopters come over our hell house and we puke and vomit blood and go to these government agencies and they turn their back on us. So we've come out of the mountains, we've come to the city, and we're asking you to help. Will you help? Yeah. Will you start by declaring right now with me that you will personally not use pesticides in your home or property? Raise your hand if you want that pledge. Sign the coupons here. We want to stuff the governor's, the governor's inbox with those. They're demanding an immediate, an immediate cease to aerial spraying of pesticides next to homes and schools. Please go to the trouble of coming up here and signing that for us. I have several facts, and then the next speaker, and we are ending with another set of reggae music. Fact. Studies have shown that all persons especially children and pregnant women, all persons commonly experience the following from long-term pesticide exposures. One, cancer. Two, neurological damage. That's nerve damage and brain damage. Three, birth defects. Four, this again, you guys, Number four caused by pesticides is reduced sperm count. Number five, suppressed immune system. Number six, reproductive and developmental harm. And number seven, and why we're directing this to the governor is 70% of all pesticides used in America are applied in agriculture and in Oregon we're not only getting the regular farm use we're getting the aerial spray use guess how far that stuff drifts anybody know on windy days 20 miles they've actually tested the air you can spray and then you can scientifically test every mile out from that spray and you find traces of that pesticide going down in a mound out as far as 20 miles. That is how you have pesticide in you. It's in the air when they spray any of the hills around Oregon and it's coming to us in the air we breathe. I say no, will you join me in saying no more? No more. Fact. Dow Chemical, running the state of Oregon with Monsanto through Oregonians for Food and Shelter, Dow Chemical once got caught of having falsified, falsified the death records of their own employees that worked in their pesticide manufacturing plants to make it look like they didn't have a higher cancer rate. All government decisions were made on that study. 20 years later, a private researcher rechecked the material and found out that they actually made up names of employees they didn't have and falsified the records. How many? 
will join me in saying Dow Chemical sucks! Dow Chemical sucks! Monsanto sucks! Monsanto sucks! And with that, another fact of the next speaker. Monsanto and Dow Chemical were both revealed to have hired a team of ex-Secret Service agents to spy on, infiltrate, and run black operations against environmental groups and anti-pesticide activists. How many of you will join me in saying no more to that? No more! How many of you have a cat or a dog? How many of you are willing to admit uh, that you use a flea collar? Anybody? Good. Because check this out. If a woman uses a flea collar or a flea soap on a cat or a dog while she's pregnant, she has a 600% greater chance that her unborn baby will develop a brain tumor or leukemia. A 600% increased chance if a pregnant woman has a flea collar on her pet and those are legal? My last fact for you. A recent study found that 100% of pregnant women under the age of 20 have pesticides in their body that were made illegal longer than 20 years ago. Every pregnant young woman has DDT found in her body right now and it hasn't been sold in the United States for 20 years. That's how long these poisons persist in our environment. And so I ask you to end with me by making a pledge. Will you put some of your life energy into creative thought, creative actions to put an end to this pesticide madness? Thank you. Please do sign the coupon. I wanted to introduce this man. He's not an official speaker today, but he came up to me at the table and showed me his hands. He used to spray these pesticides uh, out in the forest. He was a worker, and his hands are still scarred and still injured from that. Here he is. My name's Henry Jones. I spent 23 years out in the woods planting trees, fight fire, and burning slash, and I used to work for private companies like IP and Roseboro, a Roseburg lumber company, and we would burn slash, and they never told us that they sprayed their land. And several times I was out on units with black, oily, ugly smoke rising up, and I knew and told everyone that the unit had been sprayed, and they said, no, it hadn't uh, been sprayed. I said, yes, it has, and it was, and uh, it, I, I got exposed to dioxin. I've been exposed to oust, garlon, crossbow, atrazine, all, all kind of poisons, any kind of poison. I planted trees, I got exposed to thyram, which is a mercury compound. They told us that they didn't tell us what it was. And then my hands got all red and swollen and everything. These people knew what they were doing. And I got poisoned. I now have headaches. I now have uh, bad eczema. My, my feet are rotting. Uh, so these people are liars. And it's time that we put some people in jail. I mean, a regular, a regular jail. Right next to all the other. How about why don't we keep Guantanamo Bay open and take all those people that are there out and put all the corporate criminals there? No lawyer, no trial, you are guilty. Let's stay together and fight. Our next speaker, a scientist, doctor, university professor who is going to tell you exactly how the pesticides are damaging the babies and the, the unborn and the fetuses. Um, come, come forth now and, and you say your names if I'm not remembering it. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Ingrid Edstrom and I'm a nurse practitioner here in town. And I moved here um, 
So I moved here from Massachusetts about six years ago, and I have some of the information up on the table here about thermography. So I have purchased a thermography camera that is able to find problems in the breast three to eight years before the mammograms can detect it. Now what was very interesting is since I had come from Massachusetts, I wasn't aware of the amount of spraying and the genetically modified food issue in Massachusetts at the time. So what I discovered in the course of having the camera and seeing women here in this state, I discovered several very uh, disturbing issues, and this is why I'm here today. So as a medical practitioner, what I was seeing is that women were coming to me that had been herbicidally exposed, that had either been flaggers that stood on the edges of strawberry fields and held up flags, and the reason why they did that is they were trying to figure out which way the air was moving as the helicopters and crop dusters were putting down pesticides and herbicides on strawberry fields. And then I find out that the, the wheat fields are treated in the same way with overspraying, the mint, and several of the other um, products and the, uh, the crops that are grown here in this valley. So what I was finding is in the course of having this medical practice for the last six years, what I was finding is that only about an eighth of my population have normal breast exams, only an eighth. And the thermography camera can pick up um, vascular patterns in the breast, and what this is is estrogenic activity that I can actually see in the camera. So when I put people in front of the camera, I can say, you're not an organic eater, are you? And the woman will say, how do you know? And I say, because you look vascularized. You look as though you've been on estradiol, premarin. Uh, if you're not eating organically, you're getting bovine growth hormones in the meat and the dairy. If you're not eating organically, a lot of the pesticide, pesticide residue, herbicide residue is in your food. And what it does is they're estrogen mimickers and they bind in the fat cells and the estrogen sites, which are fat bound, which are usually in breast. So what I discovered was that Oregon has the second highest breast cancer rate per capita in the nation. And this was absolutely chilling to me. And I was trying to find out, coming from Massachusetts, why on earth did Oregon seem like this pristine, gorgeous place had the second highest breast cancer rate per capita. And what I discovered was it seems to be related to the herbicide and pesticide spray in this state. So uh, two years ago, what I did is I took down a number of these images, and if anyone wanted to pick things up, some of these brochures are up here, but infrared breast health, I-N-F-R-A-R-E-D, breast health, and then go to the proactive breast wellness section. And in there, there's a PowerPoint presentation that I've put up and what I did with that PowerPoint presentation was I went down to um, the county commissioners and the health department at a meeting that was organized by Lisa Arkin from the Oregon Toxic Alliance, which is now called Beyond Toxics. And I brought a breast surgeon with me. And what we did is we showed these images to the county commissioners and the health department. And I said, this is what these herbicides are doing to breast tissue, and you can see it. And it's absolutely chilling when these women come in and they know that they've been sprayed and now their breasts, that you can see these vascular patterns and hot spots, and these women have cancers. And it's, it's very, very troubling to me that the herbicide and pesticide continues. And by taking that PowerPoint down, I was able to get the roadside spraying stopped in William County. So I think that the idea is educating folks. I've now gotten the uh, PowerPoint uh, images up to the governor, and I have no idea if he's going to be able to look at these or not. But the, the aspects of the roadside spraying, the clear cutting, spraying along the roads, essentially your, your kids are standing there next to the bus stop, your little dogs, and you're out for a little walk. You're getting this stuff and the, um, the resins from the pesticides and herbicides get absorbed through the skin. People that are using fly wipe on horses, they have terrible looking scans because it absorbs the skin as well. So all of these herbicides, pesticides, or xenoestrogens or estrogen mimickers, and it looks like estrogen activates the breast tissue. So if you have little tumors that are beginning to start and you have you know, increased vascular patterns, this is what's really increasing the problem in the state. The other thing that I've discovered, and I'm now trying to um, help uh, provide information to, is the genetically modified 
of food issue and the, the GMO free folks, and I know that they're represented here today. The, the real danger with the GMOs, which they have some of them starting here in the valley, and they'll probably be talking a little bit more about this, is that if you have genetically modified crops, they genetically modify these things so they can overspray it with herbicides and pesticides. So the uh, GMO corn and soy, for example, if you are not eating organic corn or soy, every last bit of that is genetically modified. So if you don't eat organically, if you shop at Albertsons and um, are buying sort of conventional food, there are 70% of what's in your basket is genetically modified. And we can't seem to get anyone in the state to start labeling it. And I think that if people were to know what is in their food and have the labels put there, Capellas is putting green and um, green and blue dots on their shelves now. And they're the only store in town right now that's doing this so that you can know what's genetically modified and what's gluten-free. And to me, that's really fabulous. And supporting the farmers market here with all these organic farmers that are trying to keep their crops safe from people that are butters who want to start spraying is the next issue. So if we don't get this GMO stopped, and it, it can be done on a county by county level, we are all going to have no choice in our food supply. The GMOs with the herbicide overspray is going to be in all our foods, and it's not going to be safe here in this state or anywhere else in the country for that matter. So get involved with the GMO Free Eugene, who I think are here and will be speaking a little bit later. Um, if you want to go to my website, Infrared Breast Health, and look on the proactive section and actually see what these chemicals are doing to breast tissue. And by all means, try to become a little bit more active so that you can control the food and what you're feeding your family. And I thank you very much for this opportunity. I wasn't on the agenda. And uh, I really support what these people are doing. And I thank you ever so much for um, making this possible. I am Neela Rose. I am your friend. I am your daughter. I am your sister. I am your mother, I am your student, I am your teacher, I am your neighbor. I am the neighbor of all of you, I am the neighbor of Alan Ford of Roseburg Timber Company, I am the neighbor of Warehouser, also, Timber Agency, I'm also the neighbor of Seneca Jones, another Timber Agency. And I wish to be a good neighbor to all of my neighbors. And I hope, I have faith, that also our brothers and sisters that work for Roseburg Timber, Seneca Jones, Warehouser, all of the various timber agencies and corporates that are poisoning us, they are also our brothers and sisters. And we have faith that they will make the right choices every day. From this day forward, all of us, when we wake up, before we speak, before we act, before we take action, let's make the right choice. Is this good for all? We're going to ask Alan Ford of Roseburg Timber Company, our brother, when he wakes up in the morning, before he takes action, before he makes a word, is this good for all? So this is what our goal is, is that every day, each and one of us, each of, every one of us as brothers and sisters to each other on this planet, that we make the right choices every day that we ask, is this good for all? I am also a recovering victim of aerial spray. I've been sprayed many times now, on and off for the last seven years. And because of the glory of nature and of the goodness of this planet, I have been able to heal myself from the chemicals that we have been exposed to. And it's because of nature. It's because 
of pure water, it's because of pure air, it's because of pure food that we have the opportunity to heal ourselves. So let's protect that which is pure, our air. Let's protect that which is pure, our water. Let's protect that which is pure, our earth. Please make the right choices for yourself, for your children, for your family, for your planet. And please go organic. Let's make Oregon the first organic state. Let's be an example for the United States. Oregon organic. As our United States becomes organic, our world becomes organic. I'm here today because of love. Because I love life, I love you, I love my children, I love my family. I love all of you. I love this planet. Thank you. And I just wish for that love to just grow. I'm a peacemaker. I work for peace. My mission is peace. And I hope for peace for all of you. Peace for our world. It starts with yourself. Peace with your body. Peace with your mind. Peace with your community. Peace with your earth. Peace with your ancestors. Peace with your creator. Peace with the all. Bless you all. Thank you. And unless I'm mistaken, that was our final speaker and we're ready to shake our booties in the sunshine with another set of awesome reggae music. And yet, if you have not yet personally, if you have not yet personally signed one of these coupons, please do it. The governor's going to experience having an avalanche of these coupons coming into his mailbox if you will help us. Thank you. Here comes Soul Seed, Eugene's finest reggae band. Original reggae toots in the meantime. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bring it in close. Time to get moving.
Listen what I say, so Put your hands in the air, so You won't get no hermit down the road. I say yeah. I say yeah. Listen what they say. Listen what they say. I say yeah. Three times. Take another one by two to the main tower. Let's take one to the 
an original called Everyday Thing.
It's such an honor to be playing for all y'all right now on Saturday Market. This is what's up. This next one is a collection of songs by brother Frankie Hernandez. We got Bob Marley, Michael Fanny, Kissing Up and Down, and a lot of good music. So hope you enjoy. Yeah. 
documentary. Uh, it's available for free on the internet. Uh, you go to thrivemovement.com. Uh, the documentary is called Thrive and uh, it talks about everything we're talking about here today. Everything from the corruption in Monsanto, the use of subversive authority in our public schools. All of it, it just runs the whole game. So I really encourage you to go check that out. Educate yourselves as much as you can from as many different sources as possible and make your own opinions and your own decisions. So we're gonna keep playing music. We are so seen, we're right here from Eugene, Oregon. We got a couple more, couple more songs for you. Big love to Dave for putting this together. Big love to all of you for coming out and supporting this cause. Enjoying the beautiful sunshine. It's nice, so nice to be out here. So, uh, I think this next one we're gonna play uh, is a song called High Tide. We're gonna bring it down, bring it down for a second. And uh, this one is written with the, with the power of the ocean in mind. So I hope you feel the weight.
Once again, we got a, got a couple more CDs over there. If we run out, you can go on to our website, soulseedmusic.com. That's S-O-L, like the beautiful song that's shining today. And we got free music up there. We got music for sale on iTunes. Uh, so just check us out. We'll be on and on time. We're coming to you. So, much us Much love real quick to Dave for putting this on. Much respect, thank you very much. We're all out here for a reason. Show respect, thank you. Oh, yeah. 